The next area is what Dick Myers is calling the graduate school and what I call the District Leadership Academy, but it's uh, going to be more directed toward district leadership. And Dick Myers was, uh, became a Rotarian in 1996 when he joined the Marable. Is that Marable or Marable? Marable. Marable. Okay. Marable. <laughs> Rotary. Rotary Club in District 6780 in East Tennessee. And after serving uh, in a number of club leadership positions and, and leading a group study exchange to Brazil, he became president of that club in 2002 and 2003. He then served as chair of the district GSE committee and followed by chairing its Rotary Foundation Grants Committee. Thank you. In 2006, Nick and his wife Kay moved to Nashville. And we're very glad they moved to Nashville. He joined the Brentwood Rotary Club and Kay joined the Nashville Club. They are major donors, members of the Quest Society, and have attended a number of international conferences and are going to live them, if I'm not mistaken, right? Nick is a retired American diplomat with over 30 years of civilian and military service. He was District 6760's governor in the Rotary year 2011 and 2012. <coughs> Dick will be presenting first, and then my own good colleague and friend from Sunrise, Pat Dunn, he will be presenting second. Pat has been a Rotarian for seven years, and they have been a full seven years. She is employed as a professional development facilitator at the Cartersville Montgomery County School System. Pat was president of the Cartersville Sunrise Club in 2011-12, is active in working with Ryland, serves as chairman of the District Strategic Planning Committee, and will serve as an AG for District Governor Judy Tyree. She is working with PDG Big Bears to develop this new district leadership academy our graduate school where uh, it ends up being called. So, Dick, would you like to start off this first session? Thank you, Linda. Uh, about a couple of years ago, and I think some of you in this room know this, there was quite a discussion at the College of Governors about what is the, the Rotary Knowledge Ladder. You join a Rotary Club, with, how does this all work to get trained up and knowledgeable on Rotary? So we have adopted in this district a concept that says you join a club, it's that club's responsibility to orient you to what the club's responsibilities and duties and requirements are. And that's basically left right now at the club level. So club orientation, what can you expect when you have to pay your dues, what about attendance, all that kind of stuff. The next thing is, how do you train people who become Rotarians to be Rotary leaders? And that's what Ed Maupin and his gaggle of facilitators are doing, and he does a wonderful job of that. After that, we have at the district level, PETS, President-elect Training Seminar, where we take, hopefully, some of those RLI graduates who are becoming district leader, uh, district club presidents, and give them a course in how to be a club president. They serve for a year. And with this effort, the Rotary Grad School, and I use that because I am unable to distinguish between the Rotary Leadership Institute and the Rotary Leadership Academy, and I was forever confused about them, so for me this is the Rotary Grad School. And let me just run through a concept paper, which is what Pat and I and others are, are using to try to get this concept going, and then I've got a timeline I want to share with you. So, the mission of this Rotary Grad School, which you can read, it is to prepare leaders for the district level and beyond. All right? And we are targeting past club presidents. The idea being, if you haven't been a president of your club, you probably haven't had that full rotary experience that you need to have to go beyond and do things as leaders in the district. There is an academic year, okay? Basically, right now, nominations for admission are going to be accepted in August. Candidates will be sponsored. So each candidate is going to have to somebody who says, I will fill out this form because I want Glendora to go there. Right? I become Glendora's mentor, sponsor, and also responsible to make sure Glendora fills out each month's lessons. You'll get the first, there are seven lessons. You'll get the first of those in October. And 
at the first part of each month, you'll get an additional lesson. You have three weeks to turn them around, you get them back to the professor of that particular lesson, and that will run through April. In May, or it could be in June, if we haven't decided it's going to be connected with the district conference or a separate kind of activity, there will be a graduation, an appropriate ceremony. Um, students who are going to go to the Rotary Grad School, they have to be a member of a Rotary Club in 6760 and be recognized as having the potential to be a leader, right? Have to have served as a full term as president, not necessarily in this district. We do accept transplants here, right, Ed? Ed and I are both transplants. Be committed to participate in a kickoff, and this is an event which is we're going to try to pull off by webinar. One of the issues we have is how spread out we are, how do we get people from Martin and people from Savannah and people from Hendersonville all in the same place. So the idea being that once the students are selected for a particular year, we will have a webinar where it's clear exactly what is going to be expected of the students and the mentors and the professors and what they can do. Then, Oops, sorry. That's all right. Well, and at the end of which, you are willing to serve in a district position or beyond. We have a lot of committees. Pat's going to get into this a little bit. So you basically said, not only am I going to take this training, I'm, I'm committed to serving. You've got to have sufficient computer literacy to do this. This is a no, basically no paper educational process. Your lessons will be delivered to you online. They will be submitted to your professor online. You will be looking up a lot of your reference materials online. You may get one thing that I think the rest of it will put online, and that's going to be the manual of procedure, which is a big, thick book, and you, you know, you need a hard copy of it. It's just a little too hard to go through online, although you can do it. Okay? And then we got this one little wiggle room that you don't necessarily have to be a club president if you meet all sorts of other criteria and the DG says, I want this person in the class. Okay. Selection process and nomination. Any Rotarian in the district can nominate someone to go to this particular Rotary grad school. They have to have some idea of what it is they're getting into and be willing to get into it. They agree to the effort and all that kind of stuff. We will have a maximum of 15 students. You could get around 16 if you really had to, but basically you, you need to limit it so that it's not so onerous on the professor or faculty member who's handling this thing and that it becomes a job that they can't, they can't do. And we'll try to provide a student cohort that represents the diversity of the district. This is going to put some special emphasis on the AGs. You will see that the We'll post the nomination form, which is you can download on the district website along with general information, and that will all happen. And uh, in September, there will be a committee of district leaders who will select the 15 candidates to go into the Rotary Grad School. It's an extension course, okay? So as I said, we'll do the kickoff with a webinar. Each lesson concentrates on a particular aspect of Rotary knowledge. That will probably change as we go through this, as we start figuring out a little bit what we're doing. Each lesson will have a professor, and we've got, I guess Judy has contacted about half or two-thirds of the people that are asked to be are being asked to be professors, and they've agreed to do this. And they're responsible for that lesson. Pardon? Um, the mentor is just that. Have you done your lesson? You had questions about your lesson. Uh, we're going to try to get a blog up. Pat had an excellent suggestion. Once we start this, there'll be a blog. Students can go on the blog line and say, I, you know, I don't understand question 14, what's going on, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the lessons will basically consist of two folders, if you will. Folder one is reference material. 
To complete this lesson, you need to be able to get access to the district rules of procedure, the history of District 6760, who is Will Armanier's fact sheet, these kinds of things. And they will give, we will give you in that reference folder what the links are to the website or other places on RI websites so you know how to go get that stuff. Second folder is the test. And the test will say, before you take this test, please review the materials in the reference thing, right? And then you take the test. So, students get the, get the test and the materials every month. They fill them out. They send them back. The uh, materials will be designed so you can, it's a Word document. You can fill it out online. You save the Word document, attach it to an email, send it to your professor. The professor grades it sends it back to you. The professor can also write on the Word document comments as to, it's clear to me you don't know to understand the difference between the MOP and the rules of procedure or whatever is out there, okay? And to get your certificate at the end, you've got to do the seven lessons and attend a graduation ceremony which will be a combination of critique on the part of the students saying everything was fine except you really need to fix this because it's not working right and celebration for having completed the course. All right, these are the seven topics right now that we're looking at. There may be some changes down the road. One of the issues we have, and we'll get into this with the, you know, quickly with the timeline, is because of the, the good work of past district governors who go to a college of council on legislation, the MOP is changing. The first of these lessons in the normal sequence of things heavily relies on the MOP. It may not be ready by the time we kick this off in October. If it's not, we will flip these two lessons and do the organization structure of Rotary afterwards. Uh, basically, we're just throwing out $50, which will cost, cost the MOP and hopefully the cost of the celebratory event at the end for graduation, but we have a small lunch of materials and various kinds of things. Clubs should be hopefully encouraged to pay for this, but you can pay for it on your own if you want. Okay, so I'm serving as dean right now. If you got any questions, get a hold of me. Pat and I will be working this with others. Um, and I think that's it. You're hoping, it? you're hoping that I can get to the timeline, right? If you can, yeah. Can try, if you can't, then we'll... Okay, here we go, timeline. If you want, we can just try to do yours and we get timeline afterwards. <laughs> so you're going to try to have this on the website uh, where somebody can understand it or... Well, the concept paper? Yeah. Yeah, I can put that up. Sure. I'll do that. Um, this has the concept paper went to all the current leaders in the pipeline and past pipeline, like the college, college of governors asking for their inputs and fucking ideas and concepts. And so far, everybody's sort of with it. So quickly, here's the timeline that we're dealing with, okay? In April, we basically got buy-in from the district leadership. Um, this is the concept we're going to go for and what we're going to try to do. In May, we're in the process of selecting the professors. Um, I have all of the lessons from 6780. 6780 basically is doing this now. They don't do a webinar, they do a gathering at the beginning of the school year. They do a few things differently. John Miles, they have $3,000, I'm told, in their budget <laughs> for this effort, right? We don't have anything in our budget for this effort, but we can play with that. So I have all of those. We will get the professors in place. The goal, it would be that we will get, by the end of the month, the 6780 copies of the lessons to the professors. And I and if it's beyond my technical expertise, Chuck or whoever will then work with the professors to edit their document. This document says, Lesson 3, Membership, District 6780, change 6780 to 6760. <laughs> and then we go through them. Basically, I think of the seven lessons, six of them are pretty much clonable. 
because they're dealing with the, the Rotary Foundation. It's the same foundation over there as it is here. The one different one is, is the history, procedures, background of District 6760. And John Miles and I will be working together uh, to put that lesson together. Okay. Uh, the lessons, as I say, will be Word documents where it's if it's true or false, you put a T or an F. You fill in the boxes. It's expandable if you have a written answer. Right? You save the document, so it's a self-fillable thing. Okay. Uh, we'll get in June. The idea being, get out on the website. We'll put all this stuff on the website. Get ready to go. The, the professors will send back their copies of the proposed lessons and reference sheets. July and August, we get applications. Okay. Now this one area, I really have talked to Judy and Kim, and I hope down the line, the AGs play a huge role here. The AGs should and do know their clubs. The AGs should be able to say, this club president is a crackerjack, and we need to get this person involved at the district level. If just each AG would nominate one person from their clubs, we basically have filled with 15. Okay. And we filled it with some diversity in the district. Okay, so they come in, applications are reviewed in August, students are selected in September. There's a kickoff webinar where the students, the professors, faculty, district leaders, here's where we're going, this is what we're going to do, this is how it's going to work. First part of October, the dean sends out the first lesson. There will be a matrix that says this lesson is going out on this day. It's due back in no later than such and such a date to your professor, who will then grade it and get it back to you. Right? That goes on until April, which the last one is done. Then in, Mar in May, we have our graduation ceremony. And in June, we get the professors for the next year and materials upgraded and all that kind of stuff, and the cycle rolls on. So, that's it. I've got, I got one of Fred's go. Okay. Having taken both the two previous ones for 8 and 6 is your new curriculum similar to what we had in the past? Yes, but but um, the 80 thing is also targeted to develop district leaders, not club leaders. Right? Well, and and, I and the 60 that we had previously that, that I was involved in, um, it was not necessarily focused on district leadership. It was creating Rotarians. It's more like upper knowledge. division undergrad, if you will. It was a basic knowledge type of yeah. thing. Other questions? Yes, sir. So then if you took the Rotary Leadership Academy course back when you and John were doing it, would it be worthwhile for those people to go back and take the new one? The Rotary Leadership Institute? No, the Rotary Leadership Academy back from the early 2000s that you and John did. Yeah. Would it be worthwhile to go to back? To go back and do the new Dixon grad program, school. the grad school. Definitely, because this is a different focus. Okay. This mission is for district leaders. Our, the earlier leadership academy was simply basic knowledge to train people in rotary knowledge and hopefully some leadership positions, but it was not focused as much as this one is on district. This is district. Right. Okay. And the other thing, I mean, <laughs> rotary changes. Yes, it I does. mean, like the, the what you took when you took that foundation module back five or six years ago is this one's going to be almost totally different. Yes, it is. Other questions? You think it's a work with grad school? Yes. Huh? Dick, did you say the person who nominates the, part of the student will be the mentor or will it be some different, a different mentor? The, the mentor is the person who's going to nominate that person. Uh, and that person will fill out the form. The form that's filled out 
comes from the mentor and says, I hereby nominate this person. Yes, I have talked to this person and they understand what's expected and yes, I will be the mentor for the year. So there's a commitment on the part of the, the nominating individual to the program and the person they're nominating. That's the way he was we went through it. Yeah, it was by invitation only. Yeah. So basically this yeah. is this is kind of what this is. Other questions? Well, you all have been so thorough. You got a question? Yeah, I'll, I'll you. <laughs> okay, you all have been very thorough, and we appreciate the information, and hope we have lots of people participate in both, both of the uh, leadership academies. Thank you for coming.